Robert, we just heard you say yesterday that Tom Brady wants to play six or seven more years. And if you just heard, Max has a very different prediction for one Tom Brady. What do you think of Max saying Brady's going to fall off a cliff this season? Well, uh, I know that uh, Max had a wonderful Columbia undergrad education. <laughs> uh, I don't, but I, I, I don't think he's prescient in all the errors. He's a very well-educated young man, but we all make errors and mistakes. And I think maybe he's trying to get a good dialogue going. Uh, and uh, there are some fellow owners in the NFL that would like to feel the same way. but. We'll see what happens. We're lucky to have, I'm lucky to have that young man in my life. Um, I've heard you say, uh, in, in fact, the quotes recently um, were also that you kind of echoed a lot of the things that I've been saying. In fact, people who've looked at the history of football have noticed that no one's really good after the age of 41, that if Tom Brady were able to do it, he would be bucking long odds. What do you think the chances are that he can play at around his current level past this season? Oh, I think I, I always make uh, predictions based on what I've seen in the past. And knowing how he conducts his life, his food intake, what he, how he treats his body, he was working out right after the Super Bowl. He doesn't put a switch the off switch. But, you know, everything, look, look at his performance over the last two years. Uh, well, you think about it, we've been privileged to go to the championship game for the last six straight years. And, you know, it's a team effort. We have the best coach in the history of the game. And I believe we have the best quarterback. We're lucky for the confluence of those factors. But we also have a great young team of players. and. But if a quarterback, you, you can't win consistently, in my opinion, in this league without having a good quarterback. And I think we're privileged to do it. And his performance speaks for itself. Mr. Kraft, I'm incapable of calling you by your first name. I just have too much reverence for you, sir. It is great to have you on the show. Thank uh, you so thank much. You. I, 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 want you to, I want you to answer this question for me, Mr. Kraft. I want to know, put it in perspective now that you've had a few weeks to reflect on this Super Bowl championship. The whole deflate gate mess, how that messed with everybody, the motivation that Tom Brady had coming into this season, Bill Belichick as well, they never said too much about it, but you certainly never hesitated to. Talk to me about how you're feeling about your franchise and overall the league itself now that the Patriots are the Super Bowl champions again, especially after everything that happened. Well, you know, every year our objective is to make the playoffs. And if you make the playoffs, anything can happen. I understand, you know, just 15 years ago uh, when we were going, playing the greatest team on turf, you know, we were the largest underdog by 14 points. And everyone was rooting for us. And my job was to try to help create a culture of winning in New England. I was a fan in the stands before. Uh, we own the team. I understood what our fans want. And we were able to collect some great people, have continuity. Um, and when you do well, everybody comes after you. And we sort of understand that. But it's, it's like lessons in life. Rather than falling apart, you try to figure out how you can outwork and outperform and hopefully sometimes outthink your competition and then put it together. But in fact, you know, with three minutes to go in the third quarter, we had a 99.6% chance to lose, 0.04 to win. And our guys believed in one another. And it's a great lesson for young people never to give up, hang with people who are good character, who put their ego at the door and come together as a team. And it, it was just a great moment of vindication for our whole team and it's pretty cool for our fans. Our fans uh, have been behind us unbelievable. Well, Mr. Kraft, it's one thing for people to come after the New England Patriots because obviously they got to step on the field and go against them. It's another thing where you had people actually coming after you because at one time 
you know, they felt like you didn't support Brady enough, which, you know, obviously ended up being ridiculous. And we know the, 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 the love that and affection that he has for you. But what was it like for you to have to deal with so much last year, considering how folks felt you didn't support Brady as much as they would have wanted you to in Foxborough, in Boston? Well, I don't think they totally understood the dynamic. What I, li I like to get in a battle I can win. If I'm going to go in a battle and I'm going to be before a jury that's the, the person who meted out the punishment, try to do whatever I could to acquiesce. We agreed to pay the fine and do whatever we could do so that hopefully they would go easier on Brady. And that's what I hope would happen. If anything, um, we, didn't, we, get, we didn't get any daylight there. And I think there were a lot of forces at work. Um, and I understand it. You know, um, a number of owners in this league want to win badly, just like I do. And perhaps there was a strong feeling that, uh, that no negotiation. I, I, this whole thing, you know, it's in the past, but it was yeah. ridiculous. It raised to the level it did. Think about it. Uh, it's just, but you know, and sometimes in life, you take negativity and you turn it into a positive thing. In a way, you know, given the ending, it was really cool. And our fans are behind this team more than ever now. And uh, we'll just try to keep it going the best we can. No question that Boston fans are loyal there.